You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. Another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, and with me today again, as usual, is Big Show. Big Show, what's up, man? What's going on? I'm a little bit more warped today than normal, but other than that, I'm all right. I I think I agree with you. Uh, Today's show is going to be majorly warped, not slightly warped. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Listen, Let's go on ahead and get the elephant out of the room. Um, Which one? The number four quarterback, (laughs) silver and black elephant in the room. They hurt me, man. They hurt me. You go up 20 to nothing at halftime, and you can only score three more points the rest of the way out? You got got arguably the best receiver in the league. Top five tight end and a top, we'll just give him 10, top 10 slot. And all you can come up with is three points in the second half. Now, speak from it, not from a fan's perspective, because I can feel that I can feel that fire in your voice right there. I I can tell you're still hurting. All right. I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going to put it on car. Car's not the problem. We'll get to Carr versus Jackson later because he's still uh, trailing. But um, this one's on the coach. You're on the 40-something yard line. You should not be throwing passes. Run it three times, get off the field. You have one of the better kickers in the league. That's just common sense. And I guess everybody's all in fear because of uh, You mean Denver's after coach. the first fumble, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, Yes. Yeah, after the first fumble, I would have never put it put it in the air again. Because remember, in between those two fumbles, Carr almost threw a pick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. At that point, I've been like, no, no, <laughs> give it to Jacobs. Just run towards the hash mark or whatever the kicker wants. And see, this is where if we go back and I was telling you why I'm not sold on McDaniels. Mm-hmm. And this is the second week where he looks awfully Denver Bronco-ish and his coaching ability. Mm. He thinks that he had something to do with Tom Brady. Mm. He thinks that he can make Dave Carr the next. Did you just call uh, my guy Dave? Sorry, Derek Carr. (laughs) Dave is his brother, right? Yeah, yeah. My bad. (laughs) Both of those cars suck, but I'll keep it pushing. Uh, and 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 I take that back. Derek Carr's Derek Carr did not play that bad. He could have played better. Yeah, especially uh, in the second half. Yeah, but I agree with you. Uh, I would give probably eighty to eighty five percent of the fault on that on the coach, um, not putting his pieces on the right spot. You know where they can succeed. Yeah. Um, and the other 20% on the on the players for execution. You know what? It's not even about execution. I think it was fear. Sure it is. Because when, he, when Hunter what... Henry fumbles, that's execution. When he no. fumbles a second time, that's execution. Now th- that that first one I'll give I'll put on him. That second one, if you look at the replay, dude from Arizona put that helmet in the exact perfect spot. It was coming out two, no matter who was holding it. Did he have two hands on that ball? No, but if you looked at it, okay. he had one hand on the ground because he was almost giving a fall. He should have just should have just should have just failed. That's my point. Execution. But, but the reason why I put it on the whole team, not comparing the two, because it's clear that they're two different teams. When the Chiefs are on somebody's neck, they don't get off, and that's the mark of a championship team. When you got somebody down, you keep beating the hell out of them. You score 20 in the first half, you damn sure better score 20 in the second half. 
And we've seen well, the reason why. And I'll say that that's not all entirely true because the AFC Championship game, we were up 24 to 3 or 21 to 3, lost 24 21 or whatever the final score was. So, yeah, we had our foot on their neck in the first half on the Bengals, but they came back and they just, I mean, both teams are NFL teams, but I do agree with you. They, they, I, the majority of it's on the coach for me. I just – I don't like McDaniels. He's a better coordinator than the head coach. And until you guys get a better quarterback, the Raiders will not compete for a championship. I got nothing for that because I, nothing – so and I'm, we're only two games in. I'm not hitting the yeah. panic button. But right now, no. nothing that they've shown me shows any different than what you just said and i've been preaching for years if they get the right people around car he'll shine this is the year they've got the right people around him it ain't shining yeah and i'm not seeing anything different than in the eight years prior that he was in the league so he's he's just good enough to get you a certain amount of distance he's not good enough without a lot of extra help getting you over that hump. Now, that brings us to Carr versus Lamar. Um, Lamar did play better than Carr again. But, my God, that team was even worse. <clears throat> You're up, what, 35 to 7, and you lose it, what, 42 to 38? Yeah, they were up 35 to 14, I think it was. They they scored – Miami had scored 21 points to bring it back to tie. Okay. But, um, now, you, you know, can't – are you telling me that Tyreek Hill meant that much? Um, On that particular day, yes. <laughs> on that okay. particular game, yes. Uh, But – there's not too many NFL teams that are not going to bracket cover him moving forward. I, I agree. Should, so, shouldn't be. And a couple of those passes, Tyreek had to stop and get them. <laughs> you know, because the ball just floated floated on him when, when Tua was throwing it to him. But you know, but we already props. we already knew that coming into it because Tua doesn't have that strong props. an arm. Miami, you know, Miami could have beaten just about anybody yesterday. You know, Sunday they they could have just beaten about anybody. Is they caught that lightning in the bottle? I'm gonna stay tempered. I know, you know, Mrs. Calhoun in Jersey's probably excited that her Dolphins did something like that. You know, and very ecstatic and this is a shout out to her but we're gonna temper our excitement to make sure Tua can do it more than once agreed um and then you know baltimore or uh jackson and Carr. you know we're gonna continue to watch it they're about the same grades right now i i give them both about a c so far for the year uh that's learning on a curve too <laughs> yeah but uh you know they're two different styles of quarterback yeah you know let's yeah let's... one's a pocket passer and one's a runner i would give lamar a c plus actually and i would give Derek a c minus he didn't play as bad this past week but he that week one was just horrible so he's he's got a little ways to go yeah so yeah, it's that's me. Two. That's me being honest and real, not just being Raider fan. Um, I'm it's not going. It's only week two. We're not gonna. We're not gonna panic yet. No, zero and two is nothing to panic at. If we get to be zero and four, you hit that. You hit that button. You well, hit that button. I would say if you're zero and three, if y'all lose this week, who do y'all play this week? Play the Titans. If y'all were to lose that game. Kiss your playoff chances goodbye. You might as well start sucking for luck, like Colts did to try to get that number one quarterback coming out of college because you will not make the playoffs at a one three. Not in this, not no, with not this 18 AFC week West. season. Because as bad as the Broncos have played, they eked out a win. 
Yeah. I couldn't believe that. They did everything they could to give the Texans that game. And you mocked and my won. you mocked my four and thirteen or five and twelve prediction of their of their season. I, I didn't realize they were gonna be that bad. They suck. And that man. is truly coaching. They suck. Yeah. Well, not only coaching, but uh Wilson's not the the quarterback there by thinks he was. There's a reason why Seattle let him go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean Pete, do you Pete think Carroll will tell you that? I mean, do you think Pete Carroll sitting on the sideline going, Holy crap, I wish we still had him? Cause nope. Geno Smith, Russell Wilson, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Same player right now. Same player right now. I cannot disagree with you. But you know, can finishing up with AFC West, can we all just say that Justin Herbert is just a regular quarterback? I'm not gonna say no. he's I'm not gonna no. say he's Super Bowl quarterback. He's good. He has the potential to be great, but you gotta win some big games before I can call you great. Okay, yeah. I mean great great is not the word I would use for him, but he is top tier. Top tier quarterback would, in the Would league. you say that he's he's better, worse, or just as good as Joe Burrow? Um, I'm going to say better than Joe Burrow. Mm. I'm going to say Burrow is better. He showed a lot of leadership last year. His cockiness, his brazenness got them where they were. He needs to bring some of that back now because they are in trouble. That Super Bowl hangover is real, y'all. It is, except for when the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl. But, um, the, uh, I like the way you just slid that in. Yeah, I know. I know. I just had, just had to do that. You know, Joe Burrow, I don't know. Intangibles, like take, okay. At Keenan Allen for the Chargers, you know, he, I don't, he's a good wide receiver. Yeah. I wouldn't call him great. Agreed. Mike. Mike Williams, good wide receiver, wouldn't call him great. Austin Eckler, good wide receiver. I mean, uh, good running back, wouldn't call him great. Right. Okay. Jamar Chase, right. great wide receiver. Uh, Higgins and Boyd, they're on the same tier in my in my book as Allen and Williams. Yeah. Mixon, I think, is a better running back than Eckler, but you could, you know, they could say one washes the other. If you put Burrow on the Chargers team, does do the Chargers compete better, same, or worse? Mm, probably same. If you put Herbert on the Bengals team, are they better, same, worse? Wow, this is a tough one because. Part of me, I wanted to jump up just now and say better. Um, exactly. And I think I think I figured out the reason why I've come to that conclusion. The Chargers are another one of those teams that have poor coaching. Um, he's put them in positions. He's coached better this year than last year. Oh uh, yeah, I'll give you that. Of, I'll give you that. He took a lot of chances last year, and let's be honest. The, the 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 Chiefs squeaked out a win on Thursday last week. Okay. Yeah. If it was if if it wasn't for them not letting number seven come out because he was winded, my man wouldn't have got the ninety nine yard interception every time. Because just before that play, he's trying to come out, and the coach said, "No, stay in, stay in, stay in," because they didn't want to give our defense a chance to adjust. They wanted to hurry up. And, you know, they were doing a lot of. Uh, um, no huddle stuff. They didn't want our defense to adjust. Right. So he was he was dog tired, and he pointed to to the deal, and they told him no. And if you go back and watch that play, he kind of half assed his route. Yeah. Well, that numbers round seven cornerback, seventh rounder, who was making Wendy's hamburgers last year at this time, jumped the route. 
you know, took it for the NFL record base or tied it for 99 yards interception return. That was the change of the game right there. Yeah. And the fact that we broke his ribs. Yeah. You know, that helped too. But, you know, again, and I go back and because that's not the question. I'm going off on a tangent. But you said that, you know, is Burrow or Herbert better? I don't think Burrow would have made that throw that Herbert made at the very end with busted ribs. I agree. Yeah, you you got. I just that right. think Herbert is a little bit better than 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 Burrow. All right, so I'm you've hearing it here first. I'm gonna give Burrow his props. He's a little bit better than Macaulay Culkin. I mean, uh, Her Herbert's better than uh, Burrow. Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, so before we get to the other news, I want to go over the AFC West games. Get our predictions. First up, Raiders Titans. <clears throat> must win for my squad. It it's is a must at win Tennessee. for both teams. It's you know a, what? It's a... I I think that the Titans. It it isn't as big a uh, must. They're win both zero and two, brother. They're they are. But if you look at their division, it's an easier division to climb back from an zero and three hole. Not by much, but it is easier. Look at the Colts. The Colts yeah, are 0 to... 1 and 1. They about to be 0 2 and 1 at the end yeah. of this week. But... Yeah, I was I was getting to that, but um <clears throat> the Raiders, I got the Raiders winning this game, but I got them barely winning this game. Um I'm gonna say they're gonna win it, but it won't be by more than six points. It really won't. Now, and it's they, at Tennessee. It's at Tennessee. If they if they just blast Tennessee, I'll jump for joy. But they've got to win this game. So yeah, I'm going with the Raiders. I'm hesitantly going to pick the Raiders as well. But Tennessee's going to be tough on you guys. Yeah. Just because they just got embarrassed last night. Yeah. Now, back to the Colts. They are hosting the Chiefs. You thought they put a hurting on Arizona. Nah, buddy. First of all, the Colts are in disarray. You've got Matt Ryan and you scored no points last week. Against you, the Jaguars. Didn't they get rid of Carson Wentz because he wasn't productive? Yep. And they just let their kicker go, who missed a kick in the previous game. You know, he's sitting at home on the couch like, well, damn, I could have got you three points. Right. Kansas City by 35. I guarantee it. I'll say Kansas City in a walkaway win, but I don't know the score. I, I don't think we'll, we'll, we'll blank them again, but I'm really looking forward to seeing our uh, defense be able to to sack that statuesque quarterback, Matt Ryan, because he's not going to go nowhere out of the pocket. Now, I haven't kept up too much now, with the now, Chiefs. What's y'all's run defense no, 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 like? No, no. Run defense is not too bad Okay, um, so far. Uh, I mean, we held Connors and we held Eckler pretty good. I was just getting ready to get to that. What is possibly the equalizer to it, and I'm not saying that, he was the end-all, be-all. But Willie Gay, our linebacker, is suspended for the next four games. Yeah. And he was good at being able to recognize the checkdowns and the screen passes and the little short crossing routes. Yeah. If the Colts coaching staff were smart, they would uh, they would rely on that this week and get three and four or five yards a clip and just, just keep us off the field. They were smart. If they were smart. All right. Hopefully so, they're not listening to this podcast. <laughs> another chance for another AFC team, AFC West team to get on track. Jacksonville will be at Los Angeles to play the Chargers. Ooh. I got the Chargers winning this game, but it is going to be closer than you think because Jacksonville is declaring that they are no punk this year. I'm picking Jacksonville in this game. Whoa. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out. This that's my uh, that's my sleeper alert for the week. I'm picking Jacksonville. Mm, uh, mm, mm. I'm hoping that them ribs are still tender 
need a little bit more barbecue sauce on them for, for <laughs> Herbert there. And uh, that Jacksonville, the, them Jaguars feast on his ribs. All right. The Sunday night game, San Francisco treat. They go to Denver. I got the Niners. Denver hasn't showed me anything yet. They had trouble against the Texans. Yeah. Jimmy G back in the fold. Yeah, this – yeah, it's going to walk away with them. Yeah, 49ers. Okay. I think we're – we're of the same mind of on these four games. This, this I week. want to get I want to get one more game out of you and see your thoughts. All right, you have a particular Buffalo, game in mind. Oh, Buffalo Bills at the Miami Dolphins. Mm-mm-mm. This is the AFC East game. Okay. Now, part of me wants to be selfish because my fantasy team is two and zero, by the way, and ranked number one in my league, and my quarterback is Josh Allen. My defense is Buffalo. And by the way, I'd be, I'd I came, be, I came from, defense. I came from 40 points down yesterday and ended up winning the uh, game by, uh, I want to say 20 something. I get it. That was all Josh Allen. Though. <laughs> yeah. I get a different defense this week. Yeah. I, I agree with you because this is going to be a high scoring affair. I think Miami's going to come back down to earth though. Because both teams are skilled, this is where experience is going to come into place. And I think Miami, they don't want it as bad as Buffalo. That taste is still in Buffalo's mouth. And you know who was on the other side of that win when the Buffalo lost. They won Mr. Tyreek Hill. Oh, yeah. But Tyreek can only do what, you know, as soon as the ball's – he can't do that until the ball's in his hand. I guarantee you, though, if it's 13 seconds left, I put it in Mahomes' hand. I would put it in Tua's. Oh yeah, most definitely. He, uh, but um, I say I I don't really want to pick this game for when. I'm just looking. I'm looking forward to the game. Yeah. If I had to pick a winner, I'm gonna say Buffalo, just because I think they're the better team, and I'm not convinced that Tua is gonna be able to compete. However, if it goes point for point, I would be curious to see how far it goes because that is gonna decide. If Miami's going to be a threat, you know, to my team, Kansas City, they can go point for point. Because we know Josh Allen can go point for point with Patrick Mahomes. We know that. We've seen it. Yeah. It's been done. Um, but, yeah. I, I, I'm going to go with Buffalo in a in – a, they're going to win by two. Okay. I got Buffalo by three. So, again, neither one of us have winning by much. But uh, they are going to win it. And one more thing about these quarterbacks that before yeah. we go off topic again, or not off topic, we move to the next topic. The one thing that irritates the heck, like irritates me to my core is how disrespected my man Mahomes is nationally. Really? Who's yes. disrespecting him? I, Everybody. I, they no. all say Josh Allen is better. They all say Herbert is better. I Now, I I will in no way, shape, or form disrespect Mahomes because, again, I have the prove-it philosophy. Mahomes has proven it. That's why I don't like Justin Herbert. He has not proven it. Josh Allen, to some degree, has proven it. My thing is, Josh Allen and Herbert get more credit for almost beating Mahomes yeah. than Mahomes gets for actually beating Allen and Herbert. It's and just, by the way, I'm not talking shit, but uh, Derek, Derek Carr has more wins against the Chiefs than Josh Allen. Just putting that out there. They both have one, right? No, Carr has two. What? A, a, but only one against Mahomes, right? Yes, only one against Mahomes. So they're both one and one. Or both have one win against Mahomes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm off my soapbox. Well, sliding to the next subject is uh, talking about a former NFL quarterback. So tell me what all you know about Mr. Brett Favre and these funds. Man, I'll, the only thing that I heard about and that was really, it really kind of, because, you know, growing up, Favre was the man, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
enjoy watching him play. From what I understand is he created a non-for-profit organization to build, I want to say, different sporting arenas like youth soccer or youth baseball or youth football or something like that uh, for lower income families in the Wisconsin, or no, the Mississippi area. Yeah. But he ended up fraudulent, fraudulently stealing money from the uh, welfare side of the Mississippi uh, welfare and using that for his nonprofit. Instead of him donating, you know, X amount of millions of dollars, he was able to launder fraudulently money from the Mississippi Welfare Fund and put it into this said program and got busted. It's very disappointing. Yeah, I, I, I'm of that same mind because Favre was the man. And um, full disclosure, I still liked him better than Rodgers. But that's a whole nother thing. Um, legacy is being tarnished. Legacy is seriously being tarnished. And he's going to have to do something really – he's going to have to pull a rabbit out of his hat and, and to get himself back in the good graces of the American public. I don't think there's nothing he can do. Uh, he can help out all those people from the welfare fund. I mean, yeah, he's going to probably end up doing that anyway, but I don't think that's going to all of a sudden put him back in good graces in, in the public eye. I, I, think, I think this is strike three. You think so? Yeah, he, with sending he, the nude pictures to that uh, yeah, yeah, reporter, you know, and then he was, that. you know, they, he got the benefit of the doubt being a, a pill head while he was playing, you know, um, and then dragging us all through the, is he going to retire? Or is he not going to retire? BS that he did for two years. I could live with that. Even coming back, you know, right. But it got annoying after the 52nd time he said he was going to retire, you know. But that's, that's true. I just I don't know. I he has dropped he has dropped out of my top ten favorite player list. Agreed. Wow. Now that y'all know how we feel about Favre and these sports, I I, I want to go out with something on the entertainment side. There's been a lot of talk ever since the trailer dropped for the live action version. Of the Little Mermaid. And y'all already know from watching previous episodes how I feel about live action versions of any cartoon. We don't need it. We don't. But that's a whole nother subject for a whole nother time. People are up in arms on the Little Mermaid because the girl playing Ariel is black. I'm going to say this, y'all. Yeah, the Little Mermaid is black. Deal with it. The question is, did they pick the best actress for this role and how she portrays and plays this character? Will it endear the hearts of all these young girls that are watching this? If she can do that, to me, it shouldn't matter what color she is. Didn't we have a black little orphan Annie? Um, Aren't there TV shows that are remade all the time where Specific male characters are replaced by female characters. Um, one of my favorite shows, and I, you guys know I'm a Star Wars guy, but I love the reimagining of Battlestar Galactica. Had no problem with Starbuck being a woman. Katie Sackhoff, who played Star, she pulled it off. She pulled it off well. She did that character justice. So... You cannot tell me that uh, different races, different sexes can make something worse just because it's different. Your thoughts on it, Big Show? If I had a mic, I'd drop it because that's pretty much everything that I was going to say. You know, I, who cares what color she is? I mean, honestly, who gives a flip? Are mermaids real? No. no. So who gives a flying poo? I just really, I don't care. I, it, I'm it, not even going to waste my time on it. You know what? If my grandbabies want to go see it, so be it. 
I'll take them. Other than that, I probably will never see the show. I don't care. She could be white, black, green, purple, blue. I do not care. Don't care. Now, I will say this. To people that keep calling her Halle Berry, it is not Halle Bailey, Bear, Berry. It's Halle Bailey. Different black chick. Oh, yeah. By the way, if it was Halle Berry, I'd probably want to go see that movie. And I might care just a little <laughs> bit more. Just saying. All right. Uh, before we go, you got anything you want to uh, get out here with? No, I think uh, I think we said it all. Um, yeah. Um, man, I, I I do have one thing, and I've said this a couple times on a couple different platforms, probably even this show as well. We need to be better to each other. Because we don't know when that last day or that last time that we're going to be here or that other party is going to be here. So we need to be better to each other. And I'm not just talking about friends and family. I'm talking about that stranger that you hardly talk to at work. I'm talking about that person that you pass by that might be struggling with something and you can stop for a second and help them out with. Do something, and this is the challenge, and I know I've put this challenge out before, but I'm putting it out again. Do something for somebody tomorrow without any expectation whatsoever of anything in return. Make somebody else's day, and I guarantee you, in some way, shape, or form, that will make your day as well. You don't have to get any profit from it at all. Just the thought of doing good should be profit enough. I agree. All right. Now I'm off my soapbox then. <laughs> All right, gang. Um, next week we will be back. And just like always, crazier than ever because we are slightly warped. <laughs> you know that face might go on the thumbnail. Hey, whatever's got to do. <laughs> slightly warped. All right, man. Great show. Great show. Let's hope next week. Well, first of all, if the Raiders lose, I might be on life support on the show. <laughs> so I might be doing it from my hospital bed. So I want y'all to know, pray for me. I I didn't want to bring this up at all because I know you're hurting and I don't want to kick a man when he's down. Although that is the perfect time to kick a guy <laughs> is when he's down. But just to point out the obvious, how far Kansas City is better than the Raiders. We have both played the exact same teams in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But. And the results speak volumes. You know what? Here's my thing, though. You could take the Raiders out of that and insert any other team. Okay. Same result. Same result. Kansas City is the superior team right now in the NFL. No, no, they're not. They're sure, definitely can, not the most you, you superior say, team. You in can NFL. say Buffalo is close, but until Buffalo proves it, that that's not what I said. I didn't say in the NFL. I said the last two weeks. Yeah. And if you put use those parameters, Buffalo is a better football team than Kansas City. In the last two weeks, they've scored more points. They haven't given up as many points. So they are the better team. Philadelphia is a better team right now than Kansas City when it comes to points. Mm -hmm. So, but now overall, you know, if we're talking history, granted, they got to prove it. But I was just pointing out how far how far you guys really need to come up. I mean, because we played the exact same teams. I, I agree with you on that, though. On paper, we're a great matchup. Boy, for, woo, for real, woo. for real, Madden, though, for real, Madden, though, we are you guys not are a great matchup. That's what I say. It on paper, on Madden, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. In my head, we're the dominant team. But you know, that's why you play the games. Yeah, he's making that face again, y'all. You said in your head you guys mm -hmm. are better? In my head. Than Kansas City? That's the place that doesn't count. Uh, in your head? It's called wishful thinking. It's called wishful. But you're lying, to, your, but you're lying wishful... to yourself in your head? 
If I got to lie to somebody, it may as well be myself. All right, here's a question for you. <laughs> Who's better, Raiders or the Dolphins? Right now, you got to say the Dolphins. I in mean, your there's, head. Th there's, yeah, in my head, we're still the better team. Okay. You know, hell, we beat up on them last year. They got to prove it. But let's face it, if they play just like if they play Kansas City, I'd be shaking. Oh, God, please don't let Mahomes throw for three touchdowns in one quarter, you know. Right. Don't let Tyreek Hill get downfield and <laughs> Tua actually make a good throw, you know. It, it's going to be like that for the next several weeks for me, no matter who the Raiders are playing. Because – Who's y'all's next three opponents? You got Tennessee and who? Tennessee, Denver, and Kansas and then, City. And then us. Mm-hmm. Okay, so theoretically we you could, could be, be two, two and, and two. Going theoretically, into you City. could be theoretically you should be two and two coming into that Kansas City game. Should be theoretically, theoretically, but we should Denver, be we should Denver, be four and zero. Oh. Denver might get their act together and start balling out. Yeah, no, Again. they're not balling, man. Yeah. If they win four games, I'll I'll be I'll be excited. All well, right, let's let's put it this way. I would. If we're up 20 points on either of these next two opponent, po opponents, I'm going to be scared. When is the comeback starting? You know? We have, to, we, have, we have to learn to step on somebody's neck. That's what we have to learn to do. Yes. All right. Enough of us. You guys get on with your lives. But guess what? We're coming back next week. See y'all later. next week. Go Chiefs! I can't even say anything about that. <laughs> Good night. See ya.